she's relaxing because that SCM turns off right there. So the next important thing I need from you is to be distracted so that I can get in there. How was that? That's good. <laughs> the bend. Any, oh, there's, that happened again. Anything there? Oh, oh. wow. And then all the way out and then sink into the table for me. We got one before I even dropped there. <laughs> Mia, good to meet you today. You too. Um, Mia is a classmate of, I believe it was Giselle who was in last, actually, if we're going to do this sequentially. If not, well, spoilers, you'll meet her eventually. Um, what are you in for today, Mia? Mostly just general back pain and uncomfort, I guess. Okay. Um, there's, there hasn't been, like, an injury to my back mm -hmm. ever. However, I did injure my knee. I tore my left meniscus. Ooh, how long ago was that? It was, like... A long time ago, long like time. 10 years ago. So about a decade. Yeah, um, about did you get that. surgery? Has it healed up? I did. I got two knee surgeries, like two scopes. Okay. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And the last one was probably like five or six years ago. Okay. So like it's been a while. Does the knee still bother you? Only occasionally, like not very often. Okay. But since when I was, I injured it when I was so young, mm -hmm. I didn't really do all of the exercises that I was told to do because I was like... That, that's, that, that, that's not even like a kid problem, FYI. Like you kind of say, oh, it's because I was young. I still don't do Adults, that. yeah, okay, exactly. <laughs> Adults don't do their rehab exercises. Okay, do your damn exercises. Practitioners do know what's best for you in that regard. But anyways, I, I digress. That's my own tangent. Um, since then, you started developing this back pain that you think is consequential to the knee, or I don't even know if there's anything to do with it. Okay. But um, when I do get massages sometimes, mm -hmm. the person is like, oh, you must be left-handed. And I'm like, no. And they're like, oh, you But you're you tighter must... on the left then. Yeah, right? like, okay. you must have a big dog and walk it with your left hand. Yeah. I'm like, nope. Nope. So, Neither. Okay. I'm assuming it has... Is it the left knee that you, uh, got the surgery on or the right? The left. It's the left knee. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, all right, so we do have that history of an older injury, uh, now recovered, recovered. We do... Anytime we do have an injury that traumatic and we do get surgery, our body's going to naturally compensate in ways, whether that's weight bearing greater off the other side or on that side even, which can then translate to issues above or below the chain. Uh, in this case, if it is related to that knee, it would be above into the back, right? But let's, for now, let's pretend that they're separate entities, okay? Now this, this low back, uh, excuse me, this back complaint, because you mentioned it wasn't just limited to the low back. Tell me more about that. When did that start creeping up on you? Um, what have you been doing about it? You mentioned massages. like. Yeah, basically, this is not what you should do, probably. <laughs> but I wait until my back gets so sore yeah. that I have to go get a massage just for some sort of relief. Lovely, okay. And then I just wait till it hurts really bad again. Okay, well, so. y you sound really tough. All right, yeah. that, that's good. But you're correct. That's kind of not the direction we want to go. It really is up to you to take care of yourself. Um, if that's what you're able to manage with, then there's nothing wrong with that. Of course, if you ever want to get it under control, you need to take a proactive approach. But I yeah. think you like you know that. I'm, I'm sure you can figure that part out. Um, all right. So last weekend, you also mentioned that something happened with your neck, or, or but you don't. I, I can't remember how you phrased it. Yeah. Well, nothing happened. Mm -hmm. I woke up. I think it was Saturday, mm -hmm. and my neck was sort of tight. So I figured, oh, I must have slept on it mm -hmm. weird. Yeah. Then I woke up Sunday, and it was so sore that I couldn't even like support the weight of my head. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Um, all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I went and got a massage. <laughs> and did that? That obviously helped. Yes. It did. Yeah. All right. Now, have you seen aside from the massage therapist? Have you seen like a physiotherapist or a chiropractor for these complaints beforehand? Yeah, I have. All right. That's a very almost like defensive, yeah, I have. So do you want to talk about that a bit or like by all means? Yeah, I went to physio for a long time yeah. just last year for my knee and my hip. Even though the knee is an older injury. Yeah. It was mostly for my hip. Okay, got Because it. of my knee, mm -hmm. my hip is so tight. Mm -hmm. um, and I was experiencing a lot of problems in dance class specifically mm -hmm. with like turnout and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I went for probably like three months and I didn't notice any progress. Yeah. And then I got frustrated and stopped going. Understandable. So what did the physio do with you during those sessions? Um, we did some acupuncture, okay. lots of exercises. What were the exercises that you can remember? Oh, there was a ton, like stretches, putting it against the wall and mm -hmm. trying to strengthen this glute. Mm -hmm. Um, lots of just stuff okay. like that. And you still didn't find improvement with that? 
Okay. Aside from the acupuncture, the exercises, anything else for the hip? Or? Um, there was one time where someone came in and grabbed my leg and like pulled it. Okay, yanked it. Did that yep. help at all? Or It didn't feel bad, but mm. I didn't notice like, oh wow, I can really move this. Yeah, so. okay. So it's funny because usually what happens in not just athletes or dancers, but basically everybody, um, is they will develop knee pain consequential to either a hip range of motion mobility issue or an ankle range of motion mobility issue. You have the opposite, okay? Because for whatever, or like what happened to the meniscus on that? It, that's the same side as the knee surgery, right? What happened to cause that surgery in the first place? Like were you playing soccer? Cause soccer, yeah. yep, there it is, soccer. Um, so in this case, we actually have the opposite occurring where we've got that knee pain and then leading to compensatory movement changes within the hip that are now resulted in a decreased range of motion, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, for whatever reason, the exercises that she was doing with the physio weren't working. Why was that? I don't know. Do you know? I don't know yet, at least. I don't know either. Mm -hmm. I was actually pretty good for doing them at home. Mm -hmm. um, but it, to me, it kind of was just felt like my hip has been so tight for like mm -hmm. 10 years. That it's going to take more. So uh, a few like little exercises mm -hmm. aren't going to... Were you seeing the massage therapist in conjunction with the physio or no? No. No, okay couple of things to consider here. Number one, we've got to figure out what range of motion is restricted in her hip, okay? Usually, nine times out of ten, you're seeing a reduction in internal range of motion, in internal rotation. Does that, does that spark anything in your memory, internal rotation it's of the hip? It's the external. It's the external rotation. rotation. Very unique, okay? So that's much more rare as compared to the internal rotation, but we can come up with something in that regard. Um, one thing that I usually stress to people every time they do get a musculoskeletal condition is to really you're gonna wanna either see a bunch of different practitioners at once so they can all do their different disciplines because the sum of these separate parts is, well, the results are greater than the sum of the parts, if that makes sense, right? Like seeing a massage therapist and a physiotherapist will get you better results than just seeing one or the other, right? Uh, so in here, we're gonna combine a bunch of stuff to try to free up that hip as well. Cool. Okay. Now, the neck, again, that looks like it's doing better. We'll still do a screening for it, okay? As well as the upper and lower backs too. Uh, anything else that you wanna talk about? Um, I'll mention. One thing I will mention, mm -hmm. I got a massage at Christmas time mm -hmm. because it was really bad. The neck or the hip the or the back. The back, okay. And he said that the two muscles that run along the spine. The paraspinals. Yeah, okay. those were crazy. And he was like, geez, what did you do to yourself? And I was like, I have no idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like generally a lot of knots or like mm -hmm. um, if I'm standing up for a long time, mm -hmm. like one of my jobs requires me to stand up for yeah. a long time. Mm -hmm. It gets really sore and I feel like an old woman. You, Stop. you. I assume you don't do a lot of deadlifting, eh? No. No, okay. So, I do see a lot of people who do resistance train who have kind of a comparable problem to you, and actually I do, I did as well, which is that the very large, what's referred to as the spinal erectors, right? If you're immature, you can make a joke about that. But with these large spinal erectors, that is because you are being forced to stand upright for such a long period of time. Now, why is that well usually we should be able to stabilize things with our glutes but you were mentioning beforehand that you're getting a decrease or difficulty in activating that left side i believe you said glute activation did yeah. you yeah okay so kind of ties back into that hip glute activation issue as to why you might be getting those really uh, hypertonic paraspinals okay uh, and we will absolutely treat the paraspinals today but again i think it's going to come back down to that hip so we're going to have to find out Again, examine the range of motion and see what we can come up with. Hopefully, a different method of mobilizing it versus the um, versus the physio. Okay. Cool. Anything else you want to mention or talk about today? I think that's mostly it. Awesome. Okay. So what we're gonna do? Physical exam. Figure out what the issue is. See what's gonna help you the most. Okay. Mia was mentioning that she was having issues with her neck kind of last weekend. So we're gonna do a brief, not a brief. We're gonna be doing a range of motion exam to see if we have any asymmetries between the sides. I'm gonna get you to start just by bringing your chin down to your chest for me. Okay. Does that provoke any of the stiffness you were feeling beforehand or pain on either of the sides or down into the upper back? Like I, it's definitely stiff, but it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. Okay. Where are you feeling that stiffness? through here and like the top of my back. Okay, so she's feeling it very much into kind of the middle traps region, but also up into the actual neck paraspinals and even kind of feeling it myself, like she's got some pretty good muscle tone up here. So that is quite tense. I'll get you to come back up for me. You get you to look up and towards the ceiling for me, please. Any discomforts in the neck with that at all? Uh, or the mm, upper back? No, it's just like 
You got like almost pulling on the front aspect of the neck. Yeah. Right? Okay. We are stretching the neck flexors when we extend. So that makes the most sense. I think they're called like the longest coli. I can't actually remember the name of them, but I'll throw a picture up there for you guys to see later. I'll get you to face forward. Now, if I could get you to please rotate your head as far as you can to the right. We are able to get to about, let's call that 60 degrees to the right side. Now rotate as far as you can to the left, please. Now here we're able to get to about 60 degrees as well. So we are equal symmetrically in the rotation aspects. Do either of those directions kind of cause a pinching or any kind of stiffness pulling? This way did a lot, lot more. So where do you feel that you feel it on the right side? Yeah, in this, whatever that is. Let's see that with the button. Okay, so there, okay. So what we're tracing back here, I'll get you to face forward for me right now, is we are dealing with some of our scalene muscles in there. Now with that, are you getting any kind of symptoms into the arm at all or is it remaining within the neck? Um. No, it's more just in the neck. Just in the neck, okay, yeah. So fortunately, the scalenes are always a tricky area to work on because that is the exit point of what's referred to as the brachial, which means arm, plexus, which means bundle of nerves. So with the brachial plexus right in there, anytime somebody's dealing with scalene hypertonicity, I am wary of neurological signs, but if she's not getting any kind of numbness, tingling, pain down into this limb, you know, fortunately, it's not anything too severe. We can handle it with some soft tissue work today. I'll get you to tilt your right ear down to your right shoulder for me. Any pinching or pulling on this side, perhaps? Um, just the normal amount. Just the normal mm -hmm. amount. Perfect. Left ear, left shoulder, please. Looks like there's a little bit less on this side. Do you get that pulling on this as yeah. well? Yeah. Okay. So again, in the case of very tight uh, scalene muscles, when we do try to tilt away, well, then we're trying to stretch a muscle that's really, really taut. That's going to be difficult to do. That explains why there's an asymmetry to the left lateral flexion as compared to the right. So good job. Uh, next, I'll get you to give yourself a tight hug, tight, tight hug, and rotate as far as you can to the left, please. Okay, so here we're able to get to maybe about 35 degrees of thoracic rotation. Now let's go as far as you can to the right. Here there's even less, actually. Here we can only get to about 15 degrees. So I know beforehand you, uh, the massage therapist said you can relax here, said that you were quite tight on the left side. Yeah. And that's, was, uh, did you find it harder to rotate this way as compared to the other? We didn't actually do this. You didn't do the, f the no. physical exam uh, to, this, to this extent then? No. No, okay, but do you, do you feel a difference between the sides when you're doing it right now? It, it, it's up to you whether or not, if you don't feel it, you don't feel it. But I see it, that's the important thing. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Yeah. All right. So she may or may not get symptoms because of it, but I am seeing that asymmetry in the sides. It does line up with increased hypertonicity of the left side because that side doesn't want to stretch as much. Makes sense. So we can handle that. Lastly, I'll get you to stand up for me. And as far as you can, please bend down, try to touch your toes, okay? Like without bending my knees? Yeah, keep the knees straight. All right, so we can get all the way to the floor, essentially. Are we getting any kind of tightness within the hip or the low back with that? Mostly well, just the hamstrings. Just the hamstrings. Okay, yeah. come back up for me and look up towards the ceiling, please. Oh, sorry, we're going to bend back towards the ceiling. There we go. How's that in the low back and the, uh, well, everything, the hip, the hamstrings? Uh, I can feel it right here in the low back. Right in the low back. Okay, so she's pointing right to the base of the sacrum, that L5-S1 region that we'd all be very familiar with on this channel. There we go. You can have a seat. All right, remind me, it was the left leg yeah. that you're, okay, so we're actually going to start with the right to get an idea of what cool. normal is, and then we're going to look to the left, okay? So we're going to start just with a straight leg raise. We're going to keep that knee straight. We're going to bring this leg straight up as far as it will go. We can get to 90 degrees. Nice. And then we're kind of, do you get back discomfort with this or is it limited to the hamstring? The hamstring. hamstring. All right. That's totally fine. Slowly lower this down yourself. Any discomfort as you do that? No. Love it. Okay. We're going to do that same deal on this side. Bring this straight up. Any discomfort as you do that? Just hamstring. Just hamstring. Love it. Lower down. Good stuff. Okay. Now, we were mentioning that there's a discrepancy in the available hip range of motion. So let's take a look here. We're going to bring this right up. We're going to keep a bend at that knee. We're going to internally rotate that hip. We can get to about 40 degrees. Any discomfort in the hip with that? No? Mm -hmm. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and bend a bend. Any, oh, there's. <laughs> That happened again. Yeah, okay, so there was a little pop there. Any discomfort in the hip with this one? Not really. No, okay. Now this again is the symptomatic hip. So we're gonna bring this up and we're gonna test internal rotation first. We can get to about 45 degrees. We're actually a little bit further on this side. That's kind of weird. Yeah. Yeah, and so now we will go ahead and test that external rotation factor. Now that does, where do you feel the tightness on this one? If anywhere, mm. if you don't, that's... I definitely do, mm. but I don't know where. You're not sure where, okay. Like maybe in here? Okay, so my question then is if you were to, actually let's just try this right here. I want you to push your hip 
or push your knee rather into my hand as hard as you can for 10 seconds okay hard as you can we're gonna be doing something called pnf stretching here it's to target the muscles specifically her adductors if it releases and opens up more afterwards we know we're dealing more with the muscular complaint therefore we can help it out and relax for me is that tolerable yeah okay once again drive drive as hard as you can eight seven six five four three two one relax relax and does that feel like a good stretch to you on the inside kind of groin region or not um, really not really not really okay so maybe not so much a muscular complaint but in there uh, it's tough to know huh? yeah uh -huh. it doesn't really feel like anything all right i'm gonna bring this Ooh, we can't go too too far into flexion with this one but that's on both sides that's actually symmetrical okay so let's take a look at the hip flexors what that means is that we're going to check to see if we're getting hypertonic quads or the psoas muscle within this group have you heard have you heard of the psoas maybe as a dancer yes yeah okay i want you to start by taking we'll start on this side i want you to slide way down for me actually i want your legs completely off the table okay i'm gonna leave my butt right here okay. perfect lay back okay we're probably off center now but that's okay uh, i'll get you to pull this leg up into your chest with your hands okay up 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 up, up as far as you'll go okay and bring it down slowly and once again pull up 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 okay so one thing worth noting and i really hope we can see this on the camera i'll get you to lower it down is that when mia pulls her knee up into her shoulder we are seeing up uh, shoulder up into her chest excuse me we are seeing elevation of the opposite side uh, tibia actually you know the extent the farther part of our leg versus just the femur now the quadriceps muscle group extends from and i'll throw a diagram up there for you guys extends from the hip region okay from that asis that anterior superior iliac spine down through the entire femur fuses into a tendon fuses with the patellar tendon and into the uh, tibial tuberosity down here okay so in doing thomas test that's the pulling that knee up into the chest we are testing for hypertonicity of either the psoas muscle which goes from the lumbar spine just into the groin region here in which case we would see elevation of the entire femur or the quadriceps group in which case we see elevation of the tibia we are seeing elevation of the tibia which tells me of her two primary hip flexors we're dealing with quadriceps tightness so how do we handle that what well, we do quadriceps release we'd stretch out the anterior chain we could do some of the tools that we've done uh, in here before unfortunately those are quite painful but they also work mm -hmm. um so that kind of gives me a starting point for how we would therapeutically approach this in a manual care perspective as well as uh well the rehab perspective too so coming on in we're going to start with the si joints quick anatomy spine all right bottom of the spine exists our sacrum it's kind of a triangular bone that turns into our tailbone and then connecting into the sacrum are our iliums or our hip bones proper the sacroiliac or the si joints are the joints that connect the sacrum into the iliums or the hip bones so starting with the si joints once again it was the uh the left side that was symptomatic for you yep yep okay i get all turned around when the patient flips over but starting with the left side i'm gonna press on down through that si joint not too too much movement but we're feeling kind of tight on both sides to me the left does feel a little bit more restricted but not by much are you noticing a difference between the sides or not particularly um the left hurts a bit more left hurts more okay now we're going to go ahead and push up through the lumbar spine and funnily enough we're feeling kind of left-sided tightness as compared to the right i think it was the massage therapist that said you feel like you're left-handed was yep. that it yeah yep. okay so i would agree with them right and we haven't worked up into the thoracic paraspinals but right now i would agree with them you definitely feel tighter on the left still to me how long ago did you get that massage several months yeah okay when was your last one about a month ago okay how does that feel uh it feels like there's a knot there yeah, it feels like a guitar string correct I'm just going to be doing some osteopathic stuff to start. I'm going to put my hand on your front hip here. You just relax and sink into it and stretch out like so. Okay.
same deal on this side. to adjust kind of in your upper back region to start up here especially with the bias towards that left side now remind me sorry you have been adjusted before if you can remember correctly it was a while ago but what, yeah. a while ago okay so it's like quote unquote cracked I don't really like to use that term but that's what a lot of chiros or people just uh, will refer to it as so the first time you're adjusting someone there's no way to know how much force is needed in order to get things to go I make this joke a lot, but it is true. I have 300 pound patients that I could sneeze on. They release, I have 100 pound girls that I have to basically body slam to get anything to go. I'm not gonna be body slamming you. Okay, that's a little bit cool. invasive to start off. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are gonna start light, and if things don't go, then we're gonna apply a little bit more force, okay? Okay. All right, so what I need from you is to take a big breath in for me, and then all the way out. Good. There was a little subtle one there, but otherwise not too much. We are quite tight. Another breath in, please. All the way out. Mm. Okay. Am I in the way of the camera here? I don't think so. Okay. I'm gonna try up for here as well, all right? So for this, I'm gonna get you to take a big breath in once again. All the way out, and I'm going to turn your head. Oh my goodness. So that is a tight upper back. We can try this again with a different technique, maybe an anterior, see if perhaps just her anatomy is a little bit different, needs a different line of drive. But we weren't able to get much more other than the incidental one that we got just off the bat. It's also possible that there's nothing there. But truthfully, this to me, with the muscle tension that we're getting, I do believe that that warrants a second try. Bring this leg straight, and we're going to scooch the hips in closer to me, please. Be good. And then just relax as best you can. So for this, I'm gonna contact that SI. Why don't you take a big breath in for me, and then all the way out, and then sink into the table for me. Well, that Ooh. was way more cooperative than your upper back for certain. Yeah. How do you feel? I feel good. Good, happy to hear. <laughs> We're gonna get you on the other side now, okay? Good stuff, hold it right there. Top leg's gonna come up, bottom leg straight, scooch your hips towards me, thank you. All right, same deal. Big breath in, please. And then all the way out, sink into the table, good. We got one before I even dropped there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, very cooperative low back, that's a good sign. I'm gonna take right here. Now, sorry, you said that you're not a huge fan of having your neck touched, eh? I just, it freaks me out when people crack their own necks, so oh. it just feels weird to me. I really had to fight the urge to crack my own neck right now because I'm just a smart ass at heart. No, like go for it. I just, my neck is so tight yeah, that I like yeah. can't imagine what that feels like. So in cases of, well actually let's go ahead and feel your neck right now so that I can kind of get a baseline of that. So do you, do you get headaches at all? I can't remember if yeah, I asked that. Yeah, I get a lot of headaches. You get a lot of headaches. Okay. Um, the reason I ask that is because Mia's got a lot of tightness actually right at the very top of her. Like, how does that feel in there? It hurts. <laughs> Compared to the right side, worse, better or the um, same? Worse, actually. Worse on the left side, yeah? yeah? Okay, so Mia's got a lot of tightness right at the very top within that suboccipital muscle group. I guess I'll put a diagram up around here. This is so cool, I can see the camera uh, for you guys so that you guys have a better idea of what I'm talking about there. But um, hypertonicity of the suboccipital muscle region, which again are just the muscles that exist right at the base of our skull connecting into our neck, is associated with increased frequency of tension uh, and sarcogenic type headaches. So that's why chiropractors are good at dealing with headaches because we can address that issue. So we'll start with some soft tissue up top. That's all to say that I believe you were in the correct place. So and gosh golly gee, I hope I'm right. How do you feel as I go lower down into the neck? It doesn't hurt as much as the top. As the top, okay. Now let's check the right side. Mm. 
Not as bad as the left? Or? No, not as bad. Okay. Still a little painful. Still though. not great, eh? Okay. So we're going to start off by trying to get that top left. So here's the way we're going to do this. I'm going to get you to actually relax the head into my hand, pretend that this is a pillow. So right now I've got a very activated SCM. We can tell that she's relaxing because that SCM turns off right there. So the next important thing I need from you is to be distracted so that I can get in there. How was that? That's good. <laughs> <laughs> she's a little stunned. Eh? Good stuff. stuff all right still with us yep perfect we're gonna go ahead and move the microphone over to the other side now usually the first one is the easy one to get because the patient doesn't really know what to expect it's the second one <laughs> that's always a little bit more challenging because now you know i'm going to try to trick you to get in there so okay. so once again the upper cervicals on the right side are not as bad so we're going to go a little lower down towards yeah, let's say kind of the middle aspect. And again, the left side was tighter, so we did a rotary on that side. We're going to be doing what's referred to as a very poorly named lateral break adjustment to get through the neck and open up that left side. It is so poorly named. I don't know why they named it that, but all the same. All right, so once again, turn your head to the left, please, and I want you to drop it into my hand. Good, good. Oh, my shoulder's not in the way there, no. Good stuff. And how was that? All good. All good, huh? Was it painful? Did it hurt? No. Perfect. That's what we like. Just trying to make you taller real quick. All right. Good stuff. Mia was mentioning that she has quite a lot of tightness, or her massage therapist rather was mentioning she's got a lot of tightness on that left side. Um, massage will help. The complaints seem to keep coming back, and even now I can feel more tension on the left versus the right. So again, I'm gonna address the fascia because that's kind of what I do, and uh, hopefully that will help out the complaints. I've already explained petechiae and fascia release to her. Uh, if you guys don't know what that is, please go watch any of the other videos because I talk about it a lot on this channel. So uh, let's get started here, shall we? Now, now, Mia, at this point in time, I usually like to ask the patient a question about themselves that kind of gets them to talk about themselves. So at this point, I'll ask, uh, tell us about something regarding yourself that you are proud of, but you don't get to talk about very often because it sounds like you're bragging. Ooh. Does that give you any kind of uh, ideas of what to talk about? Yeah. What do you want to share with us? Well, I come from a really small town okay. in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. And growing up, I was like so shy, okay. like extremely shy, like wouldn't even walk into Walmart and like couldn't go to like a convenience store by myself mm. that kind of shy mm. and when i was growing up my whole family was like oh you're so you know you're so shy you're probably gonna go to university here and just stay here forever which is fine nothing wrong with totally that totally fine yeah. mm. but i was kind of like i remember being like nine and being like really you already know that about me kind of thing anyways so i kind of just thought that that's what i would do for the rest of my life and i would never grow out of that shell that i was in mm -hmm. And then, little by little, it kind of happened, and now I have, you know, moved away, which was a big thing for me, and I'm in a program in university doing something that I had never done before, because um, I'm a musical theater student, but mm -hmm. I, I didn't grow up doing musical theater. Okay. I was a sports kid. Okay. So, yeah, just doing new stuff and getting out of my shell and stuff well, i'm proud of that you you know you should be you sure show them in that case right yeah. like i think uh, it's very easy to get in your own head when you're a kid you know for whatever reason you're shy you think people are kind of like judging you people truthfully don't have the time and energy to think about most other people outside of themselves so Real. the moment i realized that i know that my own shyness kind of came way down because what you said i personally resonate with a lot i used to feel very uh, shy, timid, insecure. I wouldn't want to talk to people. And then eventually, you know, you kind of grow out of it by your own strategies, right? Yeah. In your case, you moved kind of like halfway across the country and got into a program that shy people do not get into. Yeah. So that's, that's really good. You should be proud of that progress, Thanks. right? And again, I'm sure the family members people who said that didn't mean it maliciously, but no, obviously as like a nine-year-old, that can be a little bit rattling sometimes, yeah. right? So anyways, good on you. Thanks. for seeing that and making the character or the personal growth not character development but like personal growth yeah yeah
tal. Mia, I was feeling through her upper traps and Lev's gap, and not only do I find them to be particularly tight, but you were saying that it feels quite painful actually yep. in here right now. Mia, one thing that I did notice about her on sitting and you on sitting is that you do have a bit of that forward slouch that all students basically have. Mm -hmm. um, when we do have that forward slouch, of course, what we're doing is with our head being held in forward anterior head carriage, we're getting more and more tension on that upper trap left scap region, and we'll call it quote unquote loosening of the middle and lower trapezius muscle groups. So the solution to upper cross syndrome, which is also anecdotally nicknamed as student syndrome because it affects a lot of students, is to loosen the upper traps, strength, as well as the pectorals, and strengthen the middle and the lower traps. All right. So we'll start just by loosening. I'll show you the exercises off camera because the statistics say that you guys don't actually care that much about rehab. It is what it is. I'll get you to look up and to the right. Good. 
and I'll get you to slowly look down and to the left for me. Go ahead. Wait, like that? You got it. You're Kay. crushing it. Good. And then I'll get you to look further even. Ooh, slid. So was that uncomfortable? Was that painful? I wouldn't be surprised if you said yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> you just look up and to the right. So this is something known as myofascial release technique. So I don't want to do this on the heart plastic or the bra straps. So I'm just going to move that out of the way. I'm going to just look up and to the right. And you, we are shortening a muscle. I am pinning it. And then you are lengthening it by looking down into the left. Again, this is for the levator scap group. Okay. It's too much. You let me know. I'll back right off. But if you want to make an omelet, you got to crack some eggs, right? Good. Up to right. Down to left. And up to right. Down to left. And one more up to right. Down to left. Good. Face forward. Tilt your right ear to your right. That was tender, eh? Yeah. Right ear to your right shoulder. Good. So this is for upper traps. Left ear, left shoulder. Right, so we were talking about the scalenes, which need more work. I'll get you to look right to right to right. Good. Hands left to left. Good. Right to right. Left to left. Good. And right to right. Left to left. Ooh, that gets tighter as we get closer in, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good. Ooh. Excuse me. Hiccup on camera. Mm. Too much coffee, too much coffee. Can you just look up into the left, please? Good, and down to the right. That was my thumb, not your neck. Up to left, down to right. Better or worse with the same on this side? Um, it hurts a lot, so probably the same. Pro probably the same, okay. Down to right. Up to left, excuse me. And down to right. Good. Face forward. Tilt your left ear to your left shoulder. And right to right. Left to left. Right to right. Left to left. Right to right. Shrug the shoulders up, good, and slowly lower. Up, slowly lower. And up, slowly lower. Good, all right. Yeah, how did you find all of that today? Uh, it was a lot, but it was really good. good. I'm feeling like loose in a way I haven't felt in a while. We and love that, yeah. I love mm -hmm. the way that you the way that you went about it, especially with the neck cracking, because mm -hmm. I was saying how the neck kind of freaks me out, mm -hmm. and so to, I was scared that I was going to tense up before yeah. you did mm -hmm. it, but because you just went with it, it was all good. I actually, I appreciate you saying that, because usually when I scare people, they like to call me cute little nicknames like asshole or mm -hmm. something afterwards, but uh, not scare, when I uh, surprise, excuse me, people in that manner. So I'm happy you kind of saw where I was coming from there. Uh, beneficial all right obviously if you're relaxed if you're calm if you know what's happening um, it is easier but for your first time it's understandable that you might be nervous now that the first one went very well the second one you're able to relax so I'm happy you had a good experience with that um, anything else that you kind of saw the value in or anything else you want to talk about or pretty much everything mm -hmm. I feel good leaving I have stuff to work mm -hmm. on when I go home mm -hmm. to feel even better mm -hmm. um, I knew exactly what to expect the whole time I know what to expect afterwards good. and I know that if anything comes up that I wasn't expecting, I can reach out. Thank you. Yeah. Good. That's that's an important one. Have healthcare providers who are available to you. That's very, very important. I did show her some exercises off camera, some external rotation of the hip banded mobilizations. Uh, so she will be taking those home and completing them ideally daily, you know, to help uh, get that glute activation and that external rotation back. Um, otherwise, I'm very confident in our ability to help you out. To, uh, not today, but just in general, also today. Wow. It's been a long day. All right, so yeah. <laughs> thank you for coming in. Very much appreciated, yes, Mia. Thank you. See you soon. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you, Mia.